here and you'll see there we go okay Norm is with us hello Norm how are you good thanks for having me on Dale okay buddy so um, I took yesterday off and it looks like you got a turning point in the market uh, based upon your work from uh, you said you that's why you wanted to be on the air yesterday on the 11th am I reading you correctly uh, that's correct okay we had, so, a, we, had a, we had a new moon yesterday at I think 12 48 Eastern time right and I, I think I sent you a chart last night to show you that the market turned uh, 1239 was the high of the day amazing okay so uh, you want to review uh, what you said last month and give us a look ahead I'm, I'm giving you the floor thank you can you see my uh, page okay yeah it's very okay. clear yeah we got it okay so just a quick review for the uh, stock market last month this is kind of the general uh, way things went uh, the blue line there was a forecast model and the black bars were the actual Dow Jones Industrial Average so that was kind of the deal had a possible pivot here where the red line, red arrow is, but the you know I had a low probability for that. So, and that when was that? Uh, that? That was like the end of the month, around the twenty eighth. You were looking for something. That no, I'm right? pointing at the red arrow, which is uh, Mercury when Mercury turned direct okay. on the on the. Uh, it was for October 9th. Oh, okay. So, All right. This is for October, beginning on uh, right. September twenty eighth, running through October twenty third. Okay, I don't know. Maybe oh, yeah. my, I'm, I I just uh, seem to recall that there was something due late October, around the 28th. Okay. Maybe Could I'm. Be. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now you want to go just into upcoming events here. That's it. Major okay. events starting this week. We had uh, uh, moderate, uh, small to moderate uh, cycle change in trend point. On uh, after on two, Monday night, Tuesday for the uh, U.S. financials, that uh, means uh, U.S. stocks, T bonds, and U.S. dollar. And uh, then the next thing uh, that we have some things coming up here tonight after the, today's close. Uh, and if you're trading any commodities and you you have an interest in either sugar or wheat, you might want to pay attention if either of those markets are in a overbought or oversold condition then they would probably get reversal because uh, from a geocentric point of view that's from the point of view of the earth Mars is going in the sign Libra which is associated with sugar and wheat yeah uh, sugar's week, been on a tear it's getting a lot of headlines lately yeah if you remember uh, a month or two ago I said watch for a low a big low in sugar I, I had been bearish for sugar for almost 18 months yeah, sure. That was like I think a thirty percent run in sugar. Nice call. Thank you. How sweet it is. <laughs> All, right. All right. Over the weekend we have a moderate uh, cycle change for the, again the U.S. financials, U.S. stocks, T bonds, and U.S. dollar. And then we also one of the themes for this month is we have a couple of huge uh, change in trend windows for oil, and that one of those is coming up over the weekend. And then again on the uh, after the close of the 17th, so that's the night of the 17th, the 18th, within one trading day. We also have uh, oh, here's a big one for your folks that all like the forex. We have yeah. a big change in trend due for the uh, for, uh, for the U.S. financials with an emphasis on the dollar. So watch for there's your okay. So the dollar's going up. So the dollar's going up into this window. So perhaps a peak. And crude is going down into this window, perhaps a low. Right, and coincident with uh, the night of the 17th, we also have a, a big event with uh, Neptune. Now, uh, one of the things I've talked about many times on your show in the past are what's called station points. This is when the planets uh, turn what's called direct or retrograde. They, they due to a period motion relative motion of the Earth, uh, the planets appear to stop their motion and reverse the direction. We know that physically they do not, but it appears that way, just like if you were driving in your car doing 60 and somebody passed you doing 70, if you glanced out your window, 
you might have the impression that you're going backwards by 10 miles an hour. That's what happens as the Earth and the different planets travel at different speeds. And at certain points, the planets look like they stop their motion and reverse. And that's what Neptune is doing the night of the 17th or early on the 18th. And so Neptune has to do with oil and uh, and also the uh, the stock market is a big basket of everything. So any significant thing happening will probably affect the stock market. Uh, one of the interesting things uh, that happens, especially the outer planets, the most powerful, reliable cycles, those are the planets from Jupiter on out to Pluto. And this will be Neptune. So that falls in that category. And there's three potential things that often happen. Number one, this is an excellent forecaster of a change in trend in the market. Number two, this often occurs at or near the high or low of the month. And number three, it has the power to invert the polarity of the planetary energy. So if the energy is all negative for all month and they really have one of these in the middle of the month, then there's a chance that that negative energy could flip to positive energy or vice versa. So we're looking for some kind of big reversal, possibly, uh, you know, a Friday, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Wednesday night, uh, Thursday, no, I'm sorry, Tuesday night or Wednesday next week. Okay. And especially for oil and uh, stocks. Watch, watch those markets. We also, looking ahead here, we have a change in trend point as we get big change in trend point as we get near just ahead of Thanksgiving. And that will be the 23rd and the afternoon of the 24th. And then another big change of trend point over uh, Thanksgiving night. Uh, into th thanks I mean, the night before Thanksgiving and into th Thanksgiving Day uh, with the Saturn making a 90-degree angle to Neptune, which, again, Neptune has to do with oil. Also, that will be because Saturn's involved. you watch uh, coffee, oats, and stocks. And uh, that brings us to Thanksgiving. Let's look ahead at some charts now. Here's the stock market. Uh, November update. Basically, to, uh, just recap, take this, took this out of my November letter, which was published back on the, I think, the 27th of October. And uh, here we have basically what I just told you. Watch for the 17th after the close. 17th, 18th is the big date of the month for potentially for the stock market if we get uh, – Overbought, oversold. Uh, this morning we're down about 10 handles on the S&P, and so that probably is breaking this uh, uptrend uh, channel. Uh, we're in a bit of a quandary here in terms of my methodology in that I expect the market to be at some sort of extreme, uh, ideally at or near the high of the month, and we have a long way to go to get to the low. And so we, for the higher probability, would be to go out up and retest the highs. Can you see my little hand bouncing around? There? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and so go up and retest the highs. Uh, you know, by about to Wednesday of next week. If that happens, mm -hmm. then we have a very, we could have a very good, a shorting opportunity. Okay. T bonds. Going ahead here now. We have the uh, yeah. That's pretty much it for that. Here to have some key dates for T-bonds. We have the, uh, well, that already happened the 10th. I think we made a little low there on the T-bonds a couple, few days ago. A couple, uh, oh, wait, um, I take it back. We made a little high there. They were about the 10th. A little short-term high. And then with the big dates for the T-bonds are coming up 16, 17 next week. So that will be Monday, Tuesday next week. So if you're following T-bonds at all, interest rates, that will be your change in trend point. You can see with the bonds are testing the support area here and uh, kind of uh, consolidating, I think, longer term. Uh, my fractal model, which I've presented in the past, uh, it's been working out very well. It says that bonds are probably headed lower into the end of the year. So they're probably going to break the support sometime after consolidation, you know. Okay. Moving ahead. Here we go. We got uh, currency land with the U.S. dollar. And you can see here how, uh, here's what I said when I, uh, in the letter published back a couple weeks ago, that I was looking for the dollar to test that 98 area. And that's what happened. So you can see here back, uh, this is where the letter came out. So we had a nice little rally up here to test the third level. And uh, now so we we're have some red through. lines at the 100 mark and 150. Are those FIB levels or just the... Uh, 
Just simple resistance. I just disconnected okay. major taps. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, nice call on that liftoff in the dollar there for that blow yeah, thank, thank you. Yeah, it exceeded your expectations and mine. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we got the next big dates coming up are the uh, are the uh, 16th, and then the uh, just before Thanksgiving it gets pretty active. It might get a little whipsaw choppy because of the have all these dates here all bundled one after the other. You know. Okay. Probably your best trade date might be if the market gets overbought or oversold around the 16th. That'll be uh, uh, Monday. Uh, then watch for a possible uh, reversal there. It'll carry, carry you uh, for uh, about a week or so, you know. Okay. Looking ahead, here's the Euro. And uh, we have some dates here for the Euro. And let's see what I said here. Oh, the Euro is interesting. This is like a classic tutorial for chart patterns. If you look at this formation here, where we have kind of a triangle type formation coming into uh, uh, mid to late October, you yeah. see that? You have a high here. You have a low back here uh, in August, uh, July and August, bottoming. Then you have a, a sharp rally up. And uh, once we broke this uh, triangle formation, then you, as you probably know, Dale, you're an old veteran, but some of your beginners out there could learn from this. If you take the widest part of this triangle formation, and then once it's broken, you flip that over, it gives you a projection. So we can take that width, I think it's about $9, and subtract that from the low, and that projects down to the, about the, the minimum uh, would be about 109, and if you take the, uh, there's, you know, like, pat, uh, patterns within the pattern here. If you take the widest part of it, you can it actually projects down to about 101 is the kind of the long term uh, potential, you know. Okay. So you are you are you kind of a, a, a still a bear on the uh, euro? I'm actually looking for a reversal in the euro around uh, sometime next week around the 106.20 level. So I'm okay, looking well, I for can... a reversal. Well, then I got a date for you. Watch the 16th, okay? Okay, I'm watching it. Okay. Jump in any time with questions. Okay. Uh, let, crude oil. Let me see if the community has any. So, guys, I'm going to put the page up if you guys have any questions. Um, let's see, Ali's saying uh, my moon is quite aligned with gold, oil, and NG this morning. Okay, so do bankers watch what Neptune is doing? <laughs> uh, probably yeah. not. Yeah. There might be a few out there that have this stuff hidden away. I don't know. Yeah. I know one of the biggest uh, hedge fund managers. Uh, I forget their name now. Uh, oh, well, the guy the guy that uh, founded it uh, was a math prof uh, before he got into uh, trading. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm thinking of? Yeah. Yeah, you're speaking at the same time that Yellen's speaking, you know. And someone said, Jacks are wild, said I'd rather listen to Norm than Yellen. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I have, I've been tracking her uh, astrology, you know, her chart. Uh-huh. It's been working pretty well the last couple of years where when she had having good uh, uh, planets, you know, good cycles from the planets, and she's yeah. in a good mood, she goes on TV and says, oh, we're going to probably do the, what do they call that, the quantitative LQE, for probably a little right. while longer, and then when she's in a bad astrological mood, she goes on TV and says, "Well, but the party's not going to last forever, you know." You know. Yeah. Then she gets hawkish. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Just All right, looking so ahead, I got one more chart. One more chart to go. Crude oil. And uh, like I said, we have a strong emphasis on crude oil this month. And here's your chart here. And we're in a kind of consolidation pattern here. And on the verge of breaking this little short-term consolidation area, and it looks like we might may go down and, and test the lows here in the next week. If that, if that happens, it might be there might be a good trade there, you know. Okay. Uh, so the line special. comes in a little bit above previous lows. Uh, th this one here, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's on no, the verge the of breaking that. The line, the wedge line, comes in above the late August lows. All right, here's your late August low. We get a higher low, is my yeah, point. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but we okay. may go down here a couple more. We're just a couple bucks away from, uh, three, four bucks away from uh, testing this low now, you know. 
All right, yeah, so that's uh, I think all my charts. And uh, any anybody have any questions? Let me see. Are you there? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna look for questions. Any questions for Norm before he goes? Going once. Any questions? You offer a free trial on your newsletter? That's what I was going to talk about next. So here's how you get the free goodies. I'm offering a uh, the free current letter for free, and with that you get a <clears throat> a three a three hour class. So I got a frog in my throat. Sorry about that. <clears throat> you get a three hour class that goes with the letter because you will need that so that you can understand, uh, you know, sort of the uh, what's in the letter because it's uh, 40 pages and it does require a little bit of study. And uh, once you get past the uh, uh, unusual, uh, you know, new language, uh, it's nothing real. It looks complicated, but it isn't. Once you get past the language, you don't have to be smarter than a fifth grader. If you if we if you had to be smart enough, fifth grader, I couldn't do it, you know. Okay. So we have and, the uh, uh, so, so contact me. You can contact me on Skype at uh, Norm dot Winsky. That's N O R M dot W I N S K I. Or if you can't remember that, just punch in my name, and I'm the only you think the only Norm Winsky in all the Skype them. And okay. or you, you can email me. I'm having trouble with my other email, so we're using N. W I N S K I. That's N Winsky at M Bark is E M B A R Q M A I L dot com. Or you can okay, call me. So Norm, uh, someone asked me how does it work, so they could contact you, and you you get Malcolm. You could contact Norm at his email or Skype. Uh, Happy Pip said it was very interesting and.